Hi friends, in this video we will go through basics and implementation of Gaussian filter and at the end we will implement a trick to not blur edges because of noise filtering. So let's get started. Gaussian filter is most common filter which people use because it is safe to assume noise as Gaussian. And if we convolute Gaussian filter over a Gaussian noise, you will see lot of reduction in the noise. For this filter, we need to know covariance in x direction and covariance in y direction. If you don't have these values, we can derive equal covariance with kernel size. So these are examples of Gaussian kernels of size 3 by 3, 5 by 5 and 7 by 7. If you notice, these numbers show a bell curve where center pixel has highest value and as you go in positive x or positive y direction, the values go on decreasing. This means closer neighboring pixel values will have more effect than farther pixel values. Unlike in mean filter where all the weights are same. If you are new to kernel convolution, padding, or if you are feeling this video a bit difficult, go to the top right corner and view the video on mean filter which covers all these basics. So for today's video, this is our input image which is an AR tag which is very sharp and without noise. So this is a good example to see the effect of Gaussian filter. In order to see the effect, we will generate some Gaussian noise which looks like this and we add the noise to the input image. In order to remove the noise, we will use a Gaussian kernel that we learned. So now we'll pass this image through a Gaussian kernel of 3 by 3. So you see here, we have a bit reduction of noise, but our edges are becoming blur. However, if we use a larger kernel of size 29 by 29, which reduces noise a lot, but we lose lot of sharpness. Hence, we have a trade-off between noise reduction and losing sharpness. So now we'll have a look at effect of Gaussian kernel with different kernel sizes. So in this case, we have a Python code which chooses different kernel size in order to give the results. So this is our input image. If I click on the next image. This is a Gaussian blur of size 3 by 3. And as I go on increasing, so this is for 7 by 7 Gaussian. You see the noise is reducing, but you are also losing the sharpness. So after a point, you don't even see the noise because if I blur the real image and I blur the noisy image, my output will be pretty much the same. So we do this till 69 by 69 kernel. So now let's understand the trick. Bilateral filter is a Gaussian filter in disguise where it reduces Gaussian noise, but it does not blur the edges. The downside to this filter is it is a bit more slow because of more computation. To answer why bilateral filter works, we need to understand why the edges get blurred. It is because there is a huge intensity difference at edges and kernel averages it out. So bilateral filter working in one sentence is Gaussian filter on space as well as pixel values. So the Gaussian function on space makes sure that only nearby pixels are considered while blurring, while the Gaussian function on intensity difference, that is pixel values, makes sure that only those pixels with similar intensities to the central pixel are considered for blurring. So it preserves the edges because we learn that edges have lot of intensity difference. So let's look at an example image. So in this case, we have a central pixel with value of 
20. So we draw a Gaussian about a pixel value of 20 with sigma color and also we draw a Gaussian about space with sigma space as its covariance. So here because of this sigma color high intensity values will have less effect on convolution. So by implementing sigma on color we see that higher deltas of intensity will have less effect on convolution. So in this case 90 has very high intensity difference which is 90 minus 20 which is 70. So it will have very less weight and this particular pixel will have negligible effect on the central pixel. So to use bilateral filter we need three things kernel size, sigma of color and sigma of space. So now the most important part is results. So if we have 19 by 19 kernel with sigma of color and sigma of space as 300, this is the output. So you see reduction in noise is tremendous, but you are not losing the edges. And now if you see comparison between Gaussian and bilateral filter of same size, you see the noise reduction is similar but blurring of edge is lot in Gaussian than the bilateral filter. So now let's look at bilateral filters with different kernel size. So you see this is the input image to bilateral blur. If we implement 3 by 3 there is very less reduction in noise. If we go for 5 by 5 now we are seeing the reduction in noise but we are not losing edges. So if I go 7 by 7 we are going on increasing we reached 51 by 51 so now we are seeing reverse effect where the edges are getting the noise again but the central values are fine so these are the results of bilateral blur so if you have a doubt between using a gaussian filter and bilateral filter. So Gaussian filter will be used when you have time criticality where if you are doing computation on a real robot and you can use bilateral filter for the applications where you don't need results real time but you need good results. So this was all about Gaussian filter and bilateral filter. If you like the video do share and let us know where you used bilateral filter to make your results better. Thank you.